Today we're gonna to check out the absolute cheapest way possible in the long run to make your own seltzer water. If you missed my first video, you can check it out up here or in the link in the description, as well as all the items used here will also be in the link in the description. Now, this video will take you from zero to 100 to making this system work. So traditionally, you have your soda stream and you have your soda stream bottle. Now what carbonates your soda from SodaStream is the SodaStream canisters. But those cost about $15 to exchange or $30 in order to just buy a new one. That's a little too pricey for me in the long run, right? I'm more of a, I'd like to pay for the right tools up front and then have it cost almost nothing down the line. So that being said, there's a couple things that we're going to change from the previous way we talked about things or the way you may be doing things with a SodaStream canister. The first thing you're going to need to get is a SodaStream. So this is the SodaStream Jet. Um, this method will actually work with any SodaStream, so you don't have to be worried about the previous method, which would only fit wider uh, machines like the Jet. Right? So you need a SodaStream and that will be linked below. You need some bottles, if your SodaStream doesn't come with bottles. Those will also be linked below. And then this is the new way of doing things. So on one end, we have a uh, uh, threading for a five pound CO2 tank. On the other end, we have a quick release here. And then we have the actual SodaStream threads that fit right up into the SodaStream. And this is the reason why this will work with any size SodaStream, no matter how small, because this is the part that lives on the SodaStream. So how do we put this together? Well, the first thing we want to do is take the end here and we want to just hand tighten, screw it right into the SodaStream. Just hand tight. Now, the second thing we want to do is you're gonna to need to be able to get the hose into the back end of the soda stream. So what I would recommend is using a step bit, something like this, to drill a hole here. I didn't have a step bit when I made mine, that's why it's a little bit messy. So then we're gonna take the quick connect and push it through the hole in the side of your soda stream, like that. Next step is to attach the quick connect valve Supposed to be nice and quick. There we go, the quick connect valve right into your soda stream and give that an extra little, little twist into the soda stream to make sure it's tight. Now that we have that set up, we're just gonna stick our back on here like that. And now, as you can see, we have a soda stream, still presses like normal, still releases like normal, but instead of a tank, we have a threading that can connect to a food grade five pound CO2 tank that can be found at most home brewing stores. I will leave the link to a description for that tank in this video. The best way to do it is to buy one on Amazon because they're much cheaper than to buy them in person. And then just go to your normal keg brewing supply store and they usually exchange them for about $20. So you're gonna give them your brand new tank I know it's a little hard to do, but they'll give you back a full tank for 20 bucks. So then each time you're replacing it, it's gonna be $20 instead of $15, but you're getting over six times the amount of CO2 in this large tank than you are getting from the smaller tank. So I'll grab this large tank right now. And here is the large tank. Now in the package with this hose, on this end, there's gonna be a little clear washer and you can see it right here. And that is important to place in here because it's gonna create the seal between your tank and your hose fitting. If you don't have that washer bit, you're gonna to need to source one from a hardware store or something like that, but it does come with the hose. It is zip tied around the hose, so just don't throw that away. So now the next step, make sure your valve is closed and we are going to thread this right on here, just like that. And now you wanna use a wrench, which I'll also link below, to tighten this. We wanna tighten it as tight as we can because when we open this valve, 
this is going to be holding all of the pressure because the other end of this quick connect has a valve as well. So all the pressure will be held in this tubing here. And if this isn't tight, you'll hear a hiss and it'll be leaking from here. So we want to make sure this is extra tight. There we go. So now the next step is to make sure we have no leaks and you can do that really easily. Slowly open the valve. There we go. Open it up all the way. I don't hear any leaks. Good sign. And now we can test it out. So we simply take our uncarbonated soda stream bottle, place it right in here. There we go. And then there we go. And you have soda stream working for much, much less. Now, a couple of comments from the last video I'll address right now. Um, in the last video, we talked about how the CO2 tanks could be non-food safe if they were just paintball tanks. This is possible. Um, it's probably negligible for actual health concerns, but if you're someone who is concerned about that, buy your tank from the actual Soda Mod website because those tanks are food grade and they are cleaned out properly, but you're gonna pay about two to three times the amount of money for the tank last time I checked. Now I could be wrong there. Um, this system is food grade all the way. So you have a food grade tube, food grade gas going straight through your soda stream. So there's a lot less transfer of gas with this system than the previous system that we were talking about. And for those of you saying, whoa, the soda stream might not be able to handle the pressure of this tank. The soda stream doesn't actually handle any pressure directly, and that's the brilliant part. So how soda stream is created, this quick connect piece is actually the main valve. So when the pressure stops, when you let go, it's actually within the valve of this hose and it's the pressure's not on the soda stream directly. The only time there's pressure within the soda stream directly is when you are pressuring up a bottle. Now, when you're pressuring up that bottle and the pressure gets too high, you have that release valve, that burping sound. So this will not damage or ruin your soda stream in any way. So let's recap. What we did is we purchased the hose we purchased a tank, got it exchanged at our local brewing spot, and then made a hole in the side of your soda stream so you can connect that dis quick connect disconnect valve. Now, after we connected this, threaded this through, connected it, and tightened down, slowly open our valve, listen for leaks, and then you're good to go. Now, the reason this video took me so long to make is I wanted to give you guys a good estimate on how long one of these will last. And it lasted me almost two months. Um, that's way longer than the standard soda stream canisters and much, much longer than filling the paintball canisters off of this. So that's about it. Um, yeah, everything is linked in the description down below if you want to purchase it through the Amazon affiliate links there. And if you have any, any other questions or uh, concerns, I'll answer those right in the comments. Thanks for watching.